Finally, the last jigsaw piece to get this coffee table put together. And welcome back to Unnecessary Inventions. So we all know that the world is still basically completely shut down and people now more than ever need something to keep themselves busy. And you know, people are turning to the old school classics like board games and jigsaw puzzles to keep themselves entertained. And of course that gave me an idea. So since I've been spending so much time at home, I was looking around at all the Ikea furniture I have. And I think everyone knows the struggle of looking at that Ikea manual and just trying to figure out what those instructions mean and hoping that it all comes together the way it's supposed to. I actually made I took one of those classic blue Ikea bags and I made the hyper bag. So when you start hyperventilating, putting together your Ikea furniture, and everything's all good. But now, since people need something to do in their lives, why not add a hundred extra steps when putting together your furniture? And so today we are going to build a full-size coffee table that is also a jigsaw puzzle. So essentially we're gonna build a full working good, cof good coffee table that also is going to have the entire top sheet be a jigsaw puzzle. So before you're actually able to use it as a coffee table, if you were to actually buy this, you gotta first put together the jigsaw puzzle, cause why not? So now that we have the idea, let's get into this unnecessary build. So over here we've got some wood that I think we'll be able to use. We've got some smaller pieces here, but up here we have these longer planks that I think are going to work perfect to cut down and use for our coffee table. These are just nice basic quarter inch pieces of plywood that I think are gonna work perfect for our coffee table. I'm gonna cut and stack a few different pieces of this plywood to make the tabletop of our coffee table. And I'm gonna cut a pattern into the tabletop so that the jigsaw pieces just roughly have something to rest on so that you can put the entire puzzle piece together for the top of your coffee table. Let's talk about the design a little bit and get all of these pieces of wood ready to be cut and made into a coffee table. So with the three stacks of the quarter inch plywood, here's what I was thinking. The first two pieces of the design are gonna be set up in a grid pattern. So this will make it just awkward enough so that you can't use the coffee table without putting the jigsaw pieces on, but it'll give us just enough space to put each of the jigsaw pieces on so you can make the entire table. So the entire top is where the jigsaw pieces are gonna go. We're gonna cut the pattern across the entire board and then there's gonna be some sort of design. I'm not quite sure what that is yet, but we'll figure it out so that you can put this coffee table together and enjoy it in your home. So the next thing that we need to do is sand all these boards down and get them ready to be cut. Like most people, I hate sanding, but I just picked up this wireless sander. So now I can go outside and sand and I don't have to get the studio an absolute mess. Amen, thank you, let's go sand. Ending. Okay, that should do it for the sanding, so let's go ahead and get these inside and start cutting them up into our coffee table. So now that we have all of that stuff sanded, primed, and ready to go, the saving grace to this entire project is something that I found online. When I first thought of the idea, I was like, how am I going to design a puzzle with all of the pieces that work? And luckily, I found a puzzle design software. I punch in the size, I punch in the tiles, and we're done. So let's do that real quick. Here is the puzzle design algorithm software, whatever you want to call it. All we have to do is punch in our dimensions. We're gonna make the final coffee table 20 inches by 40 inches. And in millimeters, that is 1016 by 508. And I want the puzzle tiles to not be too big or too small. So let's go with 13 across and seven down. I think that makes them nice and square and visually appealing looking. We should be good there. The tab size, maybe increase that a little bit. Let's go 23% and the jitter, let's go down to two just so that it's a little bit easier to just so that it's a little easier to work with. I'm going to take one hot second to redesign all of this so that it's ready for the Glowforge and I'll go through it really quick. And just like that, we are all set. So here is what the puzzle is going to look like. This section that is around here on the outside that is green, that is going to be one solid piece. I thought it would be easier if the outer rim of the coffee table was already assembled and then you could put the pieces on there just so that you had some sort of starting point of getting your pieces onto your coffee table. And so all of these green lines around here aren't actually gonna be cuts 
We're just gonna engrave those lines so that it looks like it is a puzzle piece. And then all of the blue pieces on the inside are all of the pieces that you're actually gonna use to put together the coffee table. And then the second part that we're working with here is the grid pattern. So this is going to be the grid that is gonna go underneath. So all of these spaces are gonna be holes straight down to the floor. So you can't actually use the coffee table and you're gonna have just enough space in between each section to lay the puzzle piece down and so that it stays there and connects all together. And so with that, I think we're ready to take these files and hit the Glowforge. Let's go do that. So now that we have the design all set up, it is time to bust out the Glowforge and get this design cut up onto our piece of wood. The model that I have is the Glowforge Pro, which allows me to do the pass through. So I put this entire piece of wood in, cut a little bit, move it down, cut a little bit, move it down. And at the same time, I'm testing out a brand new software for them that allows me to just put in the one big file and it scans it all and gets it all cut perfectly lined up across all of those prints. So let's load this bad boy up. You wanna make sure everything is perfectly aligned on one side so that as you move it down, you have no issues lining up the prints. And I forgot to mention, we're gonna start with the grid pattern that goes underneath the puzzle pieces. I've got the first cut set up in the Glowforge print app. It looks like it's gonna take about six minutes to print the first section. So let's go ahead and see how that does. So here you can see the Glowforge lasers cutting out that grid pattern. It goes section by section and we'll carefully laser out each one of the holes that we need for the grid. Then once it's done that section, the Glowforge will take a bunch of photos of the cut that it just made so that it knows exactly where to line things up for the next section. Once it's done taking the photos, you can open the lid and you wanna shift your material down just to about three inches from the bottom so that the Glowforge can line up the next set of prints. Once it has aligned itself to the next section, you can go ahead and hit print and move on with the next section. Then just keep on doing this until your entire board is cut out to the full pattern that you need. So now we have a look at what the full size of the coffee table is going to be. And I think this is gonna be just the perfect size. The Glowforge software did an amazing job lining up all the cuts. I actually can't even figure out where they were, which is absolutely what we want. And as I've said in the past, if you wanna get yourself a Glowforge, I put my referral link down in the description. If you wanna get one of those awesome machines, you can get up to $500 off yours. So go check out the link in my bio and get a Glowforge today. You will not regret it. Okay, now do you wanna see a magic trick? We have one of these, we need two of them. Alakazam, bippity boppity, boop, we've got two of them. I went and I printed out a second grid pattern on the Glowforge. That way we can take our two parts, glue them together, it gives us a little bit more strength to our coffee table, and it gives us a nice platform for the jigsaw pieces to go on. I used the same exact design file and process that I just showed you, so these guys actually line up completely perfectly. So, without further ado, let's go get these guys glued up together. We've got both pieces of wood here, and all we have to do is quickly glue them up with a little bit of wood glue. Nothing too fancy, just gonna use some classic wood glue to get these two pieces of wood together as one. So a little bit of time has passed since I saw you last when I was gluing up those two pieces of wood and I cut the puzzle pattern. As I mentioned earlier, the outer ring of the coffee table is one solid piece, but we did go ahead and etch in the design of the puzzle pieces. That way it's giving you a nice even look when you're putting in the rest of the puzzle pieces to make the full top of your coffee table. And here is a look at one of the pieces from the jigsaw puzzle itself. You know, I'd have to say I love the way they came out. All of the lines are very crisp and they snap together perfectly. Let me, uh, let me show you one real quick. So once again, here's the board. This piece should fit in right here. It's gonna be a lot easier when I have the actual board that's gonna, you know, have it all sitting together. But there we go, we're snapped in and then I just have to make the whole entire rest of the coffee table. So the only things that I have left to do now are glue the top puzzle board onto the grid pattern, get the legs on, 
and then we can put this thing in my house and try to solve the jigsaw puzzle. Did I ever say that I'm not a fan of doing puzzles? So this should be fun. No, this is not gonna be fun. All right, time-lapse montage, putting this bad boy together, let's go. We have ourselves a brand new unnecessary invention. The jigsaw coffee table is completed, so let's go take a deep dive. I use these classic matte black hairpin legs that I think give it a nice modern look on top of the natural finish of the coffee table itself. And here is that solid outer rim that we made with the engraved puzzle pieces, and then the inside grid border to hold all of the pieces which are right over there. So before anyone is able to actually use this coffee table, you gotta assemble all of these puzzle pieces into the table. And to be honest, I am not really looking forward to that part, but I wanna use this coffee table, so I have no choice but to start putting this god dang thing together. So let's do it. Let's start getting all these pieces onto the coffee table. This thing really did come out pretty spectacular, but let's get moving. coffee table is now completely finished, all assembled, and it is looking unnecessarily amazing. All of the puzzle pieces snapped together, even though it took a lot longer than I wanted it to, we're here. I thought the final product of this was going to be a lot jankier than it actually came out, and I had no plans on actually using this as a coffee table, but I think I'm going to keep this in my house. And of course, the official rating of the Jigsaw coffee table is 10 IKEA catalogs out of 10. No, but really, IKEA, hit me up. Let's, uh, let's make this thing a reality. As always, I put the official product photos and videos up over on Instagram, so be sure to go check those out. If you enjoyed watching me make this completely unnecessary video, go uh, smash that subscribe button and give me a big thumbs up while you're down there. That is gonna do it for today. I think I'm gonna flip this table over and do it again because I got nothing else to do. So with that, I will see you at the next invention. See ya. Thank you.